message tonight is radical changes. And I'm really talking about being radical, a radical thinking uh, that we have to change the way we think in order to fulfill God's purpose in our lives, to fulfill destiny, to do what God wants us to do, and to make the changes in our lives and in the lives of our family and the people around us. Uh, it's going to take some changes or radical changes in the way we think. If we continue on doing exactly the way we've mm -hmm. uh, been doing, we're not going to accomplish what God has in store for us. And, and so tonight's message is a very important message. It's very fundamental. Uh, we all need to take <laughs> heed to it. Uh, and the way I'm going to approach it is say there are basically three types of people on the earth. And the first one are worldly people. Uh, these are people who do not acknowledge God. And we know from Romans uh, chapter 1, verses 28 through 32, it talks about these people. It says they are unrighteous, that they are uh, unholy, they are greedy, they are envious, they have malice. Uh, and, and so all of these evil things, uh, these are worldly people. And that's in Romans chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 28. And it has a lot of other things. But if you know me very well, I, I'm not, I don't focus on negative things. I'm a very positive uh, person and, and I want to move quickly to positive things. But this is where we all were. We were worldly people before we came to Jesus, before we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And uh, it says that there is no good thing that's in my flesh. That's right. uh, and so before we know G Jesus, before we accept God, then we are worldly people and there is no flesh, no, there's no goodness, no good in our flesh, in our being. Okay, and then the day comes in which the Lord draws us to him. He chose it. He chooses yes, you. Amen. He's the one who chooses. We don't choose. Uh, that's what he told his disciples. He said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Hallelujah. And, okay, so it's God uh, that makes that choice. And there's a time uh, that he begins to woo you and prepare you so that you can accept Jesus. And so think about the day that you accept Jesus. Before you get there, your thinking is worldly thinking. Mm -hmm. It's what you've been programmed by the world mm -hmm. to think. To think. And, uh, and, and just like Romans 1 uh, said that Paul wrote that uh, people in the world are unrighteous, they are greedy, they are evil, they, are mal they have malice, uh, everything's evil, okay? So then day one that you are a Christian, your thinking has not changed. Day two, your thinking has not changed. So you have the same thinking you did as a worldly person. And that's uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And he's talking about carnal Christians. Now, oh, carnal wow. Christian is someone who has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior, as Savior, but they have not renewed their mind. So their thinking is just like in Romans 1, unrighteous, unholy, greedy, malicious, uh, deceitful, uh, hatred, all of those things. So there's no change in thinking on day one or day two. Uh, are, and it might go on for year after year. No change in their mindset. No change in their attitude. The same as worldly uh, attitude. And that's what Second Timothy uh, chapter three verses one through five says. Is they have the same attitude. They have the same thought patterns. The same. Uh, st they're still deceitful. They are lovers of self. Lovers of money lovers of pleasure, uh, but not lovers of God. 
They, they love all these other things. Now, they may have accepted Jesus Christ. And it's easy for me to relate to this because this is the way I was for years. Uh, I accepted uh, the Lord as I accepted Jesus as my Savior when I was a child. But my mind still was programmed by the world. Uh, for several years. Mm -hmm. And and so I, I relate to this message. I understand it because for years I would go to a church uh, every Sunday, church services every Sunday. I would love to talk about the Lord. I'd love to hear about the Lord. I would love to be with the people of the Lord. And then I met Sherry and she uh, had very much a similar mindset with me. And so we would go and when we'd date and we'd go to the church services. And uh, because we loved to hear about Jesus, we loved to be around the people of God. We'd love to serve the Lord. Uh, but in the, that whole process, we never renewed our mind. Now see, 1 Corinthians Chapter 3, verse 5 says they have a form of godliness, yes. and that's Christianity. That reference to godliness there, and I've looked it up in a lot of different uh, com commentaries, and it's all referring to uh, Christianity. And so it's a form of godliness, and we'll mm. call it Christianity, but, and this is really, really critical here, but denying the power. And what are the power? What's the power they're denying? It's the power to change their mind, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to change their thinking, to change from a worldly thought system, a worldly attitude to a, a spiritual attitude. That only comes through the Holy Spirit. And that's what cleans out, George, it cleans it out. So it's very important for us to understand that we can go to church services on Sunday morning with a lot of other people who think like we do, have the same attitude, but we have not renewed our mind. They have not renewed their mind. And so that happened to us mm -hmm. uh, for years uh, because we didn't understand or well, how you renew your mind. See, those people who were Christians had the same worldly attitude as people in the world. But they had accepted Jesus so as their, their Savior. spirit was reborn. Uh, a... But their mind was not changed. Mm. There was no change in the way they thought. No change in the way they acted. There, uh, a lot of people go to church services on Sunday morning with the same attitude as the people in the world. Uh, see, when you accept Jesus as your Savior, you can see the kingdom. You can hear about the kingdom and you can get excited about the kingdom, but you cannot walk in the kingdom oh, because wow. first Corinthians uh, chapter nine, uh, uh, six verses nine through 11 says that uh, they have the same attitude as the world. And it says they cannot inherit the kingdom oh wow so as, wow. as long as your mind is like the, the world, world programmed by the world you're watching it watching news and you're getting uh, anxious and uh, upset about what's going on in the world and you're not you're not focusing on the lord you're just focusing on what's going on in the world what's going on in your work what's going on in your family you're just you're caught up in those things, then it says you cannot inherit the kingdom. Hallelujah. So when you're born again, when you receive Jesus as your savior, you can see the kingdom, you can hear about the kingdom, you, you can love the uh, hearing about the kingdom, but you cannot inherit the kingdom. That means you cannot operate effectively in the kingdom oh wow. wow so i'm going to show you tonight that you've got to be radically changed in the way you think and most christians have not been changed they've not been radically changed they can talk about jesus and they can they can uh 
uh, memorize verses and, and uh, tell you verses, but their mind has not been renewed. And we're going to talk about how do you renew your mind. And I call it the morphing, listen to this, morphing process. You know what morphing is? It's where a worm turns into a butterfly. That's called metamorphosis. And so I call it the morphing process. So there has to be a big change, a radical change. So we're talking about a radical change tonight if you want to operate in the kingdom. Well, let's think about what is the kingdom. The kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So it is the realm of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And in that realm, all things are possible. Uh, you're, oh, hallelujah. You might say, well, my, but my children are running away from God. All mm -hmm. things are possible. possible. You might say, well, but my body is sick and I've got, uh, I've got these, uh, uh, all of these issues in my body. But in the kingdom, all things, things are, are possible. possible. Glory to God. So it's the realm of the Holy Spirit where everything is possible. And uh, 1 Corinthians 2, uh, or, or Let's see, uh, I believe it's verse 20, talks about the kingdom of God is not words. It's not just words, mm. but it's in the power. Sure. Now, we know that from Acts 10, 38, that how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power. So the power of God is the Holy Spirit. So what I'm talking about tonight is the realm of the Holy Spirit. But there's a lot of congregations that never talk about the Holy Spirit. That's where we were raised. That's yeah, where Sherry and we, I were both raised. They we never, didn't hear about it. They, they never mentioned it. They didn't even give us a chance to reject the Holy Spirit and the power of God. They just didn't tell us about it. They kept it uh, hidden from us. And the reason they kept it hidden from us is that they rejected it themselves. Mm -hmm. And so the pastor and the denomination, they rejected the power of the Holy Spirit. But that's what Timothy was talking about, what <laughs> Paul was talking about when he wrote to Timothy, when he said, these people have a form of Christianity, a form of godliness, godliness. but they deny the power because it takes the power of God to radically change you so that you can move from a carnal Christian to a spiritual, spiritual. person. I mean, okay. So, so I'm talking about three different kinds of people today. Worldly people; those are the people who rejected Jesus. They they are unrighteous. They are unholy. They are greedy. They are malicious. They are evil. Then the second type of people I'm talking about are carnal Christians. They accept Jesus, but they have the same attitude and mindset as worldly people. But there is a third group, and this is who all of you are. These are spiritual people. people I mean. So I, I want to uh, talk about some spiritual people, and uh, Gal Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 says that you who are spiritual restore Hallelujah. people. Hallelujah. Those who have had trouble, those who've had problems, restore them. You who are spiritual, okay? But that's not the only thing. In uh, 1 Corinthians 2.15, it says that uh, the spiritual person can discern all things, that they understand what's going on. The unspiritual or the carnally minded person doesn't know what the Holy Spirit's talking about. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit could talk even in a, even in a, a meeting like tonight. Uh, the Holy Spirit could speak to us, could speak to our heart. But a person who has not renewed their mind uh, will be carnally minded and will not understand what the Spirit is saying and will not think that the Holy Spirit is important. Those are carnal mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. They have not changed their mindset from worldly people. They have confessed Jesus as their savior, but they have not changed their mind. Now, 
what I want you to see is there are two verses here that are real critical that will help us understand how we go from being a carnal Christian, denying the power of God, to becoming a spiritual person. And the first one is Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. And Paul said, I'm begging you to, glory to God, to mm. present your body as a living sacrifice. Okay, you know, Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, you've got to lay down your life and pick up mine. So, so Roman, Romans here in Romans, Paul is saying, I beg you that you present your body as a living sacrifice and so that your mind will be renewed. Oh, here it is. Hallelujah. So that your mind will be renewed. Oh, hallelujah. But I want to look at that. So you'll be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, Sherry talked about this word transformed a moment ago. Uh, morphing. It was metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. You you are transformed or you are morphed. Uh, you, you go through the process of, from a, a metamorphosis from a, a, an infant to an adult. That's what a, a worm is, an mm -hmm. infant. A caterpillar. A, a caterpillar, and then it becomes a butterfly. It goes through a <laughs> metamorphosis process to go from an infant to an adult. A metamorphosis. It's the same thing. But what did you, that, that word metamorphosis in the Greek is used four times in the Bible. Four times in the Bible. First, Matthew 17, verse 2, Jesus is on the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John, and he sees Elijah and Moses, and he is transfigured, or he goes through a metamorphosis. Well, he's transformed on the Mount of Transfiguration, the word metamorphosis. It's also used the same word in Mark uh, chapter 9, verse 2. It said Jesus was transfigured, but in the Greek, it's metamorphosis. There was I a love that word. metamorphosis. Now we see in Romans 12, 2, that we, you and me, you, we all can go through a metamorphosis, yes. just the same word mm. that Jesus was transfigured. We go through metamorphosis, changing from a butterfly, a butter, from a caterpillar to a butterfly. That's a metamorphosis, a transform. How do we do it? We present our bodies as a living sacrifice and our mind is renewed. So no longer... No longer do we think like the world. How mm -hmm. does the world think? Uh, they think of unrighteous, unholy, ungodly, uh, hatred, malice, murder, greed, envy, strife. That's the world. We have to change our thinking. Uh, and the only way we can do it is to go through a metamorphosis, a transformation mm -hmm. by the renewing of our mind. And I want you to know there are just there are two verses that relate to you and me about metamorphosis. And the first one is that we renew our mind. We are transformed by the renewing of our mind so we know what the will of God is. We're cleaning it out. We're cleaning out our brain. Now, the second one uh, is 1 Corinthians. I believe it's 2.15 um, uh, that says we, that that one which is spiritual, okay? How are we made spiritual? When we look into the Bible, we are transformed. So as long as we are studying the word of God, uh, looking into the Bible, it's like we're looking at a mirror, uh, a, a mirror and what we're seeing, we're seeing Jesus, and, and as we're seeing Jesus, we are being transformed. Our mind is being transformed, metamorphosis. We're going through a metamorphosis by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Did you Hallelujah. hear me? We go through a transformation by the Spirit of God. And so we, there are two scriptures then 
that show that we are changed, we are morphed from a carnal Christian to a spiritual person yeah. by these two things, renewing our mind and by the Holy Spirit as we study the word of God, as we're looking into the mirror, into that mirror showing law us of liberty. who Jesus is. That's the perfect law of liberty. As we continue looking into the perfect law of liberty, the Holy Spirit is transforming our mind. It's a radical change. A metamorphosis is a radical change. Now, God is saying that he, he, it's reasonable for us to worship him and to go through a radical change. So to him, it's just reasonable that we go through a radical change where you're changed from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Now, many of the Christians that you go to church with, they're still in the caterpillar uh, the stage because they have not renewed their mind because there are two things that renew the mind. You have to present your body as a living sacrifice and have your mind renewed. That's the first one. The second one is we look into the perfect law of liberty and we are transformed uh, by the Holy Spirit. So those are the two scriptures that are very important here for this message tonight. This message, see, the title of it is Radically Changed. Who's going to be radically changed? You and I. You and I are going to be Hallelujah. radically changed. How are we radically changed? And what are we radically changed from? From worldly thinking mm -hmm. to uh, become not just a carnal Christian. Let's don't stop at being a carnal Christian. We all went through the process. We were all in the world. Then we accepted Jesus as our Savior. But then we became a carnal Christian. And sometimes we go as a carnal Christian for year after year. Yeah, we did for Be years and years. Because you just go to church services and they tell you how wonderful Jesus is. And you think about Jesus and you sing songs about Jesus but you're never told about the Holy Spirit. You never embrace the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, the carnal Christians that Paul wrote about in 2 Timothy chapter 3, they had a form of godliness or a form of Christianity, but they denied the power. So many people who go to church day after day, week after week, and get involved in all the activities, they have not renewed their mind. They are still carnal Christians. Now, Romans chapter 8, verses 6 and 7 says, to be carnally minded, minded is death. death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If you Do you have life and peace? Well, how do you get it? Be spiritually minded. And how do you become spiritually minded? By laying your body on God's altar, letting him renew your mind, looking into the perfect law of liberty and let the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit renew your mind. See, a lot of your friends have not renewed their mind. That's right. They're still uh, thinking about worldly thoughts. And so what I'm saying tonight, you need to be around some people who are spiritually minded mm. uh, and they will encourage you to be spiritually minded. That's right. We've got to renew our mind. Otherwise, we are powerless. We have no power to change our lives or to change our spouse or our children or our finances or Anything about us, we do not have power until, glory to God, we become spiritual. You who are spiritual, spiritual. can change things. Oh, hallelujah. It takes a radical change Woo. in your thinking to change your life, to change your situation, yes. to change your family situation, to change your finances. It's going to take radical change in your thinking. And it's going to be done by two verses, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, 
and then 1 Corinthians, um, I'm going to say it's 3.18 uh, or 2.15. I've got two verses that are coming to my mind. Okay, so it's, it's those two verses by the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. Carnal Christians, see, deny. They, they reject the power. We have to embrace the power, accept the power. And, and I want to tell you something. The reason I thought about, about this message and how important it is to you, because I want to tell each of you, you have already made a bold step. Mm -hmm. Just join us on Tuesday night. Yes. You know, uh, George and Joy invited us uh, to do something, and they didn't know what we were going to do when it all started, and it started quite a while ago. They didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, and I know that each of you, uh, when, when you were invited to join us, you didn't know what you were joining. And, and uh, it took some faith. It took some boldness on your part mm -hmm. uh, to step out and to come here and to, and to come here every Tuesday night because Sherry and I are radical people. We are <laughs> radical for Jesus, and we want you to be radical. We want you a radical change in your life, a radical change in your situation, a radical change in your family, radical changes. We're talking about radical changes. Uh, a lot of people are just satisfied with meager existence. They're, they're not changing. They're, they're uh, comfortable where they are. That's right. But if you want to break out of your comfort zone, if you want things to change in your life and in your family and, and in the people around you, you've got to have a radical change in your thinking. Otherwise, things are going to continue on getting worse and worse. Uh, you look at the Bible. The Bible says things are going to get worse and worse. That's it doesn't, right. doesn't say things are going to get better and better. They're going to get worse and worse. The only thing that causes things to get better is when we begin to operate effectively in the kingdom of oh, God, goodness. because in the kingdom of God, everything mm -hmm. is possible. All things are possible with God. Amen. With God, all things are possible. But listen to this. All things are possible to him who believes, yes. to her who believes. Well, whoever believes, all things are possible because you function in the kingdom. That's the realm of the Holy Spirit where everything is possible. It's going to take radical change in thinking. And you've already made a bold statement and a bold step just to come here on Tuesday nights and continue with us. A lot of people give up and they throw up their hand and, and they say, I don't understand that. The reason they don't understand it is they don't understand the things of the Holy Spirit because a spiritual person understands the, the things of the Spirit, but a person who is not spiritual does not understand what the Holy Spirit is doing. And it does not matter to the people who are unspiritual, but you are different than that. You are spiritual and you're not satisfied uh, being in the miry clay and in the mully grubs. You're wanting to grow up the mountain with the Lord. And that's amen, what amen. Sherry and I are doing. We're going higher and higher with the Lord. We're not satisfied where we are. We know that we need to change in order for us to go higher in the Lord and operate more effectively in the kingdom of God. Now, this is a very simple message. It's a very fundamental message that you are spiritual and you who are spiritual can restore your life. You can restore your marriage and you, your relationship and you can restore your children. Uh, you can restore you who are spiritual. Now, how do you get to be Spiritual, you renew your mind, uh, and it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not about how much effort you make. It's not about how many verses you read. It's not how many... How many meetings you go to. How many meetings you go to. It's about the power of God operating in your life. And if you go to a congregation where they reject the Holy Spirit and where they never talk about the Holy Spirit... 
you are not being renewed there. Yeah. You need to go be with people, mm -hmm. uh, have fellowship with people who are walking in the light because we all mm -hmm. need to renew our thinking to the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is an important message and I hope you'll get a hold of it and not reject it because I see something special about each person here who comes here and, and week after week to listen to us, to listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say. You are special. God wants to do something in your life. God wants to turn your life around, turn your situation around, but it's going to be up to you. Are you going to accept what the Holy Spirit is doing, what the Holy Spirit wants to do, and, and let him renew your mind as you lay your life on the God's altar and renew your mind and, and let the Holy Spirit operate in your life as you look into the perfect law of liberty. Thank you for being here today. <laughs> Hallelujah.